Hi there, we're just here with something that we've been given from my sister and brother-in-law. Uh, they found this in their loft. It's something that's been abandoned by a previous owner of their house. And they're having a clear out, making space for their stuff. And they found it and thought instantly that uh, the best home for this would be to bring it here and give it to me. So we're going to see what we can do with it. So uh, shall we get on and open it? So this is it. It's from 1976 as far as we can ascertain and it's an uh, Airfix railway model. Uh, Airfix don't make uh, model railway stuff uh, anymore. Uh, they sold the right. So I think that you can still buy a modern version of at least some of these. Um, I'm not sure who makes them now but um, let's just have a look and see what we've got in here. So we'll take the lid off. It's survived its stay in the loft quite well. That, that box, uh, the edges have gone, they always do. But the actual picture uh, is still quite nice. Let's see what we've got in here. Um, well, there should be a locomotive, two coaches, some track and a controller. Uh, but it looks like that the controller has uh, long since disappeared and... Uh, oh, no track either, but we're not really worried about that. They probably got fastened to a, a wooden board uh, for kids to play with a long time ago and the wooden board's been stored in a garage and then thrown away. But uh, it doesn't really bother us, so empty box for the track. We've certainly got all the other stuff. Let's have a look at the locomotive first. Uh, it's missing the insert that would have protected it. Um, would have been polystyrene. It's probably disintegrated a long, long time ago. Let's have a look at this locomotive here. There we are. A Great Rest Western uh, 262 Prairie Tank. This is actually quite a good model given uh, the, the age. Um, a lot better than some of the other model trains I've seen from the 1970s period. There's a little bit of damage there on the, the rear, bump, um, rear buffer. But uh, we're not too worried about that. One thing that does impress me is the, the couplings there. It's the same it looks like on those coaches. It's a narrow one. Um, and it took until um, late 1990s onwards to actually see them from other manufacturers. Um, so that's pretty good. It looks pretty clean. Um, it's not had the ingress of dust and dirt that you might expect from a lot. Um, there's two of these coaches. They yeah, they're exactly the same. Uh, back in the 70s, obviously, it was just a toy, so manufacturers would give you two of the same thing and you'd love it. Uh, wouldn't necessarily be too bothered that they're identical. Um, it's got the plastic wheels, steam roller tread wheels, as I'd refer to them. Quite common the period. That's because the track was quite coarse. Um, and a lot of other models were quite coarse and, and really really very much toy-like. So it's been designed presumably to fit in and be able to work with different manufacturer systems. Again we've got the narrow couplings but they're not bad models given the age. Um, in remarkably good condition. Uh, let's have a look at the other one here. It's exactly the same. Slide this out carefully. It's lost its clear plastic insert. You just have to be careful it doesn't uh, catch on the box. And there we are. Yeah, it's identical to that coach. So we've got two of the same there and our locomotive. So it probably hasn't run in, I guess, maybe 20 years or so. So I don't know, would you, would you turn on a washing machine from 1976 that hadn't been used in 20 years? Probably not, but it's a bit different. So let's take it out to the shed and see what we can get it to do. So we're going to start off getting these coaches onto the track, try not to demolish the scenery as we go. Now they do have quite fat wheels with big, big treads, um, so they may bump a little bit through the point work. But we can cope with that. Let's put that in there. And a 
couple up, make sure the couplings mesh properly. So there we go. There we are. Right, there are the two coaches. That's the locomotive. It's missing the coupling off the back, so we're going to have to have it running backwards to pull the coaches, but it uh, should be alright. Let's see if we get make sure all the wheels are on the track. Make sure the coupling's centered. And then there we go. And we're gonna give it some beans and see what happens. Oh very noisy. Sounds like a bag of spanners in a cement mixer. You stop. Let's just see, can we? How odd. I know what the problem is. What's actually happened is, it's not, not a fault of the locomotive, but the cold weather that we've had, you can probably see my breath in the air, has meant that uh, some of the electrical switches that are underneath here are uh, not quite flicking all the way they should. So uh, when the weather warms up, that'd be fine. But it's just to cause a little bit of embarrassment. But uh, we're, good, we're good to go again. Right, let's try again. It does work. That shows a lot about good old British manufacturing from the 1970s. At least the toys still work. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take good care of yourself. Don't forget to share this video if you like it and subscribe to the channel for uh, more information on the building of this uh, model railway out here in the shed and also to watch some slightly more conventional trains at work running on it. Bye for now.